So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects, an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-wits pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. First consecutive week of Cinema PsyOps. I'm your host, Court, the guy who's going to give himself a fucking goiter in his throat if he's not careful about how much he shouts to open the show. And sitting safely away from me all the way across the city of Omaha in his spunker is my co-host, Matt! I'm telling you, I don't know, but if it starts raining, I am just going to have a paperclips moment. I think that uh, once we find out why said paperclips moments happen in the film, that joke's going to feel yeah. really bad to everybody that doesn't know yet. Yeah, that's true, actually. This is bad. I mean, that's it's fucking horrific what happens. Jesus Christ. This is the film making equivalent of kicking you in the balls and leaving your foot there once it's done and just grinding yeah. what's and your, just what's leaving you well it there. aware that there's an entire heel program happening around here it's uh it's pretty gross so needless to say i rather enjoyed the corruption of chris miller and it appears that matt <laughs> may have found it to be a powerful and moving film but not one that he can say the words i enjoy yeah i can't say i enjoyed it but i it did not bore me <laughs> Well, 
apparently you can't wait to fucking talk about this movie. <laughs> I mean, it's a good movie. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. That's the movie that we're covering this week. But you got to remember that people want a little pablum. Oh, yeah. we got, they, they need some pablum. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Hey, Court, how's your face? <laughs> <laughs> uh less wrinkly than it used to be um, oh nice plastic surgery <laughs> drinking the blood of the innocent again <laughs> well ever since baby blood yeah i thought it would help but it, it hasn't all, uh, it's, all I, it's done is made me extremely ill really huh. who would have thought science <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought consuming nothing but blood actually isn't that good for you uh, i'm shocked shocked i say shocked I just want to point out that we are joking. I did not consume blood. Not no. Not not that I feel like the audience would be all that fucking terrified if they found out that I was trying an all blood diet. <laughs> like I, I feel like my audience will go with me on this and just be like, "Yeah, that's court." He wanted yeah, to give it's it a just shot. court. That's what court's gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he read a bunch of stupid shit on the internet and gave it a try. That sounds like court. <laughs> fucking dummy red internet again don't do that (laughs) right but what i'm getting at here is i'm more concerned knowing the listeners as well as i do i am more concerned that i will make a joke about how i consume nothing but blood and it made me sick i i'm more concerned with them actually going out and doing the research and finding out if a human being could consist on an all blood diet and if said blood diet was uh, actually human if it would in fact make them sick just so they could prove me wrong step by step and show me what i did that was incorrect with my work because because I feel like our listeners are that studious. I mean, yes, a good lot of be. them, a good lot of them are. If you fucking misstep a single thing, they are there to be like, no, dude, hang on. That's they not will how that is. correct your ass. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I also want to say this. It's in the most loving and supportive way possible because not a single one of them has called me a dummy. That only happens in this virtual room that we are currently having for our podcast recording. This is true. We, uh, <laughs> we only do it like to each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The mutually assured self-destruction of each other other's egos is something that we promise on air <laughs> yes we, we try to come through on that pretty well <laughs> yeah see now we gave him a little bit of pablum we padded out the episode yeah. just a little bit more and now it's time for that motherfucking promo this will keep you quiet oh hi there i didn't see you you call me cutting a new show i'm bo ransdell and i'm one of the many creators you can find on legion podcasts i said quiet My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com, or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now... Back to the cutting room.
let that go a little longer than I intended to. For everyone that is listening on the Pirate Radio edit, that is the Ramones' Don't Come Close. A song which, by the way, Johnny hated because he thought it was too sissy or something oh, along really? those lines. <laughs> yeah. weird. Yeah, uh, Johnny, the guitar player, uh, had some thoughts on things that I don't agree with. Let's just put it as politely as possible and move on to the fucking trailer. Word up. We never know when something is going to happen. And when it does, everything changes at once. The corruption of Chris Miller. Two women who hate each other join together to protect themselves from a mad killer. He's in the library. He can't have locked all the windows. There must be some way out. The corruption of Chris Miller. Gene Seberg. Marisol. Barry Stokes. The corruption of Chris Miller. All right. All right. Well, fuck it. We all had a good time. The corruption of Chris Miller. The first 20 minutes, a woman wakes up in bed, and she's out there looking for somebody. Uh, But she's not finding them. She's whistling around the house like she's looking for a fucking bird. Um, And then all of a sudden, a person comes out dressed as uh, Charlie Chaplin in a weird sense. And like with a Charlie Chaplin almost mask on. But it was all creepy. And they're being very silent and walking around. It's not creepy. This is a sexual thing that they're doing. It's not creepy. This is a sexual thing, man. I I don't think this is a sexual thing she's doing. Uh, so I think this is a game that they're playing for fun. I don't think so. I don't think this game is any fun for her. Um, <laughs> she uh, is telling him that uh, her husband's going to be home, and uh, she's he's got to get the fuck out of there. Uh, she pulls out uh, a little bit of cash and says, you know, hey, it's not much, but it's all you're worth. She's being a real dick. She's being a, 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 not a nice person to this guy. And uh, as uh, she puts her hand down he uh stabs her hand and then we see their you know she screams we see her dog outside kind of going nuts and um at that point he uh we cut back into the house and she is completely bloodied and fucking just dead as you know shit as one would be when this happens to someone <laughs> when they're stabbed the ever-loving shit out of them with a pair of scissors yes 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 and uh the charlie chaplin character goes ahead and gets changed and uh runs out of the house and takes some more cash uh, really robbing her of just cash. Uh, runs out. Um, is kind of just like, hey, I'm done with all this horse shit. Uh, throws <laughs> the mask to the side, runs out into the rain, and just skips along on uh, their merrily way out of the uh, out of the area. Okay, and he had a guitar, right? He definitely had a guitar. He had a guitar. Yeah, I'm sorry. He picked up a guitar in a bag. Uh huh. Yes. So, uh, and she really wanted to look through the bag because she thought he might have, uh, you know, th- threw something away or stolen uh, some shit. Or stole. I'm thrown something made stolen something yeah so uh then we cut to a nice day out of you know someplace and uh there's a lady she's uh collecting the mail and she looks through and there's one particular piece she's really kind of concerned about it looks like so she pockets it uh well we see another lady is watching her uh do that well uh she gets in there and we see that lady her name's ruth the lady who got the mail and we see uh the aforementioned chris miller uh she shows up uh asking for the mail and wants the piece of mail that was hidden from her so they, she gives it up and uh it's only from a psychiatric hospital she thought it might be from her dad uh so all of a sudden we've we've definitely got some you know dad issues uh, around here um and a phrase that was used in the tv show arrested development yeah well, with its, uh, the psych newsletter, they ask if anything's better, and uh, Chris says the letter says everything's pretty much still the same. And then we cut to a guy getting off a train with a guitar and a bag and walking away. Is uh, this the guy so- that we saw as Charlie Chaplin? Is that what this film is inferring? I need a ruling on this. I, I do not know. I think we're supposed to think it is. Okay. How's that sound? I think we're supposed to think it definitely is. Okay. I don't know if it is. <laughs> Right. Okay. So the the question here is basically not just who is the murderer or who is the murderer, but also is there possibility of more than one murderer? Yeah, exactly. Uh, or I mean, what's who is this person? Obviously, that you know, we don't know. 
And is there more than one? Is there just the one? Is there a half murderer? We just don't know these things. It depends upon whether uh, or not you can tell the guy underneath the Charlie Chaplin makeup and who he actually was, even though they tried to make you believe that they ripped off a mask and it was a whole mask that made his face look different. You can still yeah, kind of tell the actor. Yeah, he wasn't just painted like that. <laughs> right. You can still kind of tell the actor if you want to spoil it for yourself. Yeah. I, I don't. Um, okay, so you're going to choose to believe that that was not the guy that we saw with, that ran off and ripped off the Charlie Chaplin mask. Just because he's carrying a guitar, you just think that we're being led to believe that so far. Well, I, I'm, well no, I, I, should, I should be a little bit more uh, uh, better with that. I don't know if it is or not. How about that? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's Charlie Chaplin, I don't, I, the, char- the killer, or not. I'm sitting here, I, in my opinion, I'm thinking the movie's trying to tell me it is. But you can't tell... And you can't say. But I sure. can't tell. Gotcha. Yeah. We can move on. I'm sorry. All right, not a problem. Uh, so anyway, um, now we're, we cut to a bad rainstorm. And it seems Chris has a lot of issues with uh, the storm. Uh, Ruth uh, arrives. Uh, uh, Ruth is, uh, I'm sorry. Ruth is talking to her and says, hey, you know, it's going to be okay. You're going to be fine. More time here at this house. That's safe that's you know you'll you'll be safe you'll be taken care of a little more time here you'll be right as rain and then they'll like stop and go vacation some places um so i guess we're we're trying to make people just feel better uh (laughs) about you know hey some uh you you have a deep trauma but if you keep living here you're gonna be fine because wherever you live it's just where you ever need to be, right? I mean, I, I don't know if places can help you get over a trauma. It depends upon whether or not the regression that she's experiencing while at this place and secluded mm-hmm. without anyone but this other woman around who is a constant agitation that's going to make her want to leave. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like it's engineered in such a way as to prod her to want to leave more than anything and to do whatever work she needs to do. But also, I feel like she's never going to to actually heal like it's just not going to work and they need to abandon this strategy and move on to a supervised living situation in public or something instead you yeah. know uh, for what's going on but it's clear that something is up with I'm guessing Chris because the other woman seems to be the one that's assertive and gets the mail and is older yeah and because she's older in a Spanish made film you were to believe that she is more matronly <laughs> well I don't know if I believe that <laughs> <laughs> right whatever but anyway, she's taking care of her. That that much is pretty much obvious. And um, there's some resentment going back and forth in both directions, which is making this a very daytime drama, dilemma type uh, melodrama feeling to it. But in a real dark and sinister way, because like, what the fuck happened? What the yeah. fuck is going on? And why are they so it, at odds with each and other? So this is obviously not her mother. No. So they, they, how, yeah. how would this person set up to get who seems not to have any relation to this yo? Know, young lady how does she get to be her caregiver so (laughs) yeah how is all of this working uh this film has got me right now and i'm interested already and i i will warn everyone up front yes there is going to be some serious interpersonal family drama and romance melodrama shit in this movie but hold on just hold on yeah it'll it'll explode it'll get there (laughs) yeah yeah the thing the trailer was trying to promise you it will be there you just have to be patient just be patient we're we're gonna get there they're giving it there. They're giving us some pathos in the characters' actions to really kind of deepen the sadness that comes about. Yes. Uh, well, then we see this guy. He's walking around in the rain. Um, and we don't know what he's doing, but it doesn't seem very good. Uh, never walking walking around the rain is never uh, a, a good thing. <gasps> now, is this the guy from the train? Again, I don't know. I, are we led to believe it is? Right. So this is another guy walking in the rain, but he's carrying a guitar. So is this the guy from the train? Is this also the guy from the Charlie Chaplin shit that ran off carrying a guitar later? I do not know. Uh, or I don't know what we're led to believe either. So right now I'm massively confused. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we have only so far seen one person walking around carrying a guitar. Yeah. 
All right. See, and I think we're getting all sorts of, you know, uh, discombobulated type shit. <laughs> right. So you're you're thinking that we're getting multiple different variations of a similar looking man that you would have to pick out of a lineup that we're trying to guess on which one of these guys, because we know for sure the guy walking away from that murder scene from the Charlie Chaplin thing was carrying a guitar, but we're seeing multiple guys carrying guitars, whether they're getting off trains or walking in the rain. And it sounds like right now is a popular time for vagrants right so how many are we getting what's what the fuck yeah. right and it sounds like all the vagrants carry a guitar well it's a good way to earn money and you know yeah. or go to a pub and maybe get some food by playing at the pub you know yeah exactly so i'm just saying though that's kind of what it's all starting to sound like around here right so it's basically all the vagabonds are coming into town to play because it's like some kind of a festival for that sort of thing yes well we're getting ready for bed and the ladies are talking in our first clip why do you bother about me why do you think i really don't know the first time i saw you you were only 10 years old you were riding behind your father on his motorbike hugging him tight so you wouldn't fall off if you had fallen off you wouldn't have even noticed now he's let us both fall off he's been gone nearly a year now do you still think of him a lot? You have the same eyes, the same mouth. You must think about him a little every night, even just to hate him. You brought me here in the hope of seeing him again. How many times do I have to tell you? Your father will never come back here. Aren't you afraid to be alone with me? You wouldn't hurt me. A man, maybe. Not me. Men don't love. They possess. They injure. They invade. It's always cruelty and violence with him. Good night, Chris. Ruth. Even if I call you, don't come tonight. Sleep well. Okay, first of all, at the very end of the clip, I just want to say the mood that I currently have and the feeling that I actually have is that gif of Castle trying to start to say something and then pausing for a moment, putting up his finger, and then coming right back like they're going to say something, and then Castle just kind of looks away and does nothing. That's me right now. With all the stuff yeah. that the lady said where I'm like, ah, uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah, I can't, I, I've got nothing. Yeah, yeah, about men? Yeah. yeah. All right, well, all right, well. <laughs> all I can say is I struggle yeah. against that nature to be a better better human <laughs> yeah be a better human as a Ferengi would say right I mean the reason the reason our species survived is because man is psychopathic <laughs> kinda yeah we are uh we're real fucked up <laughs> <laughs> anyway we can move on now I just wanted to find All right. it. I, I just, that's the emotion that that brought out of me while watching the film and then play back here it, it spiked that that memory <laughs> well we're uh we're back out in the rain and the guy's kind of looking at a picture or a, a map or something he's looking at a piece of paper so, so something's going on um and he is just kind of starting to wonder you know uh, it looks like he's lost but he's trying to find something i'm just not exactly sure uh what he's looking for but i kind of have an idea he's 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 definitely got a uh he's definitely close to wherever he's wants to be <laughs> so for lack of a better word see we see uh chris uh, she's starting to have some visions of a, a man weightlifting a very big large sweaty man weightlifting uh which that seems to be disconcerting and then like little ballerinas practicing dancing so you're all of a sudden you don't have a good feeling uh about what might be happening the juxtapositions the, the juxtaposition of the two images that we're seeing of the massive monster bodybuilder covered in sweat very big very hairy very wrestler from that era looking kind of man and then cutting back to these innocent sweet little girl ballerinas back and forth your mind is going to draw a conclusion 
from those two images back and forth when the way that they're showing them pretty much on its own and you kind of know what's going on and you kind of figure it out right off the bat but then you are kind of dreading that it's not what you're thinking it is and that they're not going to go that yeah. dark and the film taunts you <sighs> for the rest of the way through it on whether or not they're going to go that dark yeah <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Until, like, they finally do or do not. There is no try. So <laughs> There's only us reviewing. Yes, there's only us. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, so, anyway, uh, she um, starts calling for uh, Ruth. She starts calling for her. She's really lost her mind on this. She starts stabbing her own pillow. So, you know, there's something going on. And then you see Ruth, like, cl- shutting the lights off and listening to her scream. And you're like... Okay, what's that about? Um, um, and then- I'd, I'd like to uh, I'd like to propose a theory as to what I believe is going on with this. Uh-huh. I can't remember the name of it, but there's a type of therapy, uh, and it's big in movies because it's uh, something that they can do very visually to use, where you're supposed to confront your fears. And oh yeah, so she's timing it with a thunderstorm and the rain that's happening to shut off the lights in such a way as to force her to deal with what's going on and with her. Uh, with her fears and and that sort of thing uh and i think it's like part of the therapy which is why she's getting the letters like it's okay now i'll step up and try this or or whatever you know what i mean and the reason mm-hmm. the reason that they're here is that it rains so fucking frequently at this house but but here's the problem i don't feel she's doing that at this point in the movie i feel ruth has darker intentions okay and maybe does not have chris's best interests at heart and i felt that at this point watching the movie okay so you're saying that this is just her torturing chris for the sake of torturing chris in her own pleasure i that's how i looked at it because she had a weird ass face while doing all this okay i do not disagree with you but what i feel is that this reason that she's here and the reason that this sort of thing started was to make her confront the fear but perhaps she could have had some kind of a safe word or something like you know for the the conf- confrontation to become comforting or something along those lines where she would be more in control and not feel so helpless perhaps uh yeah and then maybe it turned into what you're seeing here i was just speculating that that's why there could be a justification for this i don't disagree with you she's deriving some kind of perverse pleasure out of it but that doesn't mean that that's not why her function is there anyway and it definitely is perverse because uh my uh, uh real big problem with it is when she comes up to comfort her she kisses chris in a way that's not very i, I don't know appropriate for someone you're supposed to be caring for it's just- a European film, so I don't know. I'm not gonna cultural yeah, yeah, differences. I guess, you know, it is, but how about this? If this were an American film, if they were in America, that would be inappropriate. <laughs> I still think even in a Europe film, that's an inappropriate way to kiss somebody who you're supposed to be caring for because they're they they have a trauma. All right. Don't want you be kissing anybody like that when they have a trauma like that. I'm not arguing that, Matt. I'm yeah. not. I'm absolutely not. And anyway, that actually ends the first 20 minutes as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So one thing that we are definitely in accordance with, Ruth enjoys torturing Chris. Yes. We definitely agree with that. We yes. have yes. no yes. idea how many vagabond guys guys or just dudes strolling around with guitars or roaming this uh this pastoral countryside we have no idea if we've seen multiples or just, just the just same, same one. guy right yeah yeah we have we, yeah. we don't really know for sure although i kind of feel like it's always been the same guy like that's uh, how it, i interpret you could it. be very right on all of that <laughs> My thought was the guy carrying the guitar and the guy that was in the um, chaplain makeup was all the same dude. And this is just him fleeing the consequences of what he did back there as quickly as possible and going to a countryside place to lay low with the spoils of the money. And that that could very well be. Yes, that's just how I interpreted it. I may very well be wrong, but that's just what I thought I was seeing. And until you brought up all of these infinite possibilities, like you've been watching too much Marvel what if i didn't think anything of it i haven't seen one one if yet oh, jesus it still stands for the joke my man it still stands for the joke yeah 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 Let's... i know i'm just i i was i was going outside the realm going wow i still haven't seen one of those yet and i'm shocked at myself like that but <laughs> it is what it is scold yourself later let's move on to the next 20 <laughs> all right next 20 starts the next day uh chris is uh uh checking out her pillow damage that she stabbed uh she ruth's kind of asking how she's feeling but she's ignoring her uh not even talking to her um well then ruth is in the barn and finds a dude sleeping in there uh sleeping in the hay his name is uh barney 
the barnacle. Uh, she says she's going to give him five minutes to get the fuck out of there before her husband gets home or she calls the cops. She uses both. Uh, and Barnacle is starting to see kind of through her that uh, there's no husband coming home. Eh, maybe the cops are a thing, though. So he starts getting dressed, but he only, he also oddly tries to come on to her. So, yeah. I mean, there's that too. Okay. Since you're not going to describe it, this is how he tries to come on to her. He's sleeping in a bunch of hay naked, which is a bad idea for multiple reasons. If anyone who's ever, oh my actually, God. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. That's not going to help you. If you've <laughs> ever actually been in hay, like actually in hay, like, mm-hmm. like that, like he was burying himself in hay, it gets everywhere and it does not feel good listen there's hay in his pee hole let's let's just say what we're trying to say clip (laughs) but anyway he pops up out of there starker fucking nude and we get a nice ass shot for those of you that are like into that sort of thing like if 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 naked male buttocks is your thing this is the this is the shot for you when he pops up (laughs) and so he's displaying his manhood at her in a kind of threatening yet offering way when he quote unquote comes on to her and kind of steps forward and when he likes the look she gives when she looks down then he gets a little more cheeky with her and it becomes this sort of like flirtatious you know uh sinful little scamp who's gonna tempt his way into her boudoir (laughs) yeah yeah exactly and that's what they're playing out here and we just got to go through the melodrama folks because that's what gets him inside the house yeah that's that's how we that's how we get into this so everyone just calm it down (laughs) this is how we add another element to this story that's going to keep the pressure cooker under severe pressure we see we cut to chris is out riding her bike out in the woods uh then roof offers barney some coffee and that's actually our next clip how long have you been in spain oh four or five months maybe six i don't quite remember where are you going nowhere in particular just wandering around i've come from a place where it rained a lot they told me i find good weather here so i took the first train and it's still pissing down. What do you do? I study anthropology. Human beings interest me. Ew. So he seems creepy already. Yeah. Anytime someone says human beings interest me, I'm 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 they're suspect to me. Because we, we're not all that interesting. Also, if you say things like human beings interest me and not paraphrase it with my fellow humans interest me yeah, or something yeah. along those lines. That also can uh, get a little weird there. Yeah, like he sees himself above his fellow man and they are yeah. his but his playthings to toy with. He's but they are but insects insects to him. Maybe like uh like if people who tear flies off or wings off of flies or some shit like that. <laughs> Right. And so does that mean that he definitely was Charlie Chaplin? Yes. Yes, that's that's definitely what that means. <laughs> he was definitely Charlie Chaplin. But he maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he definitely was, but probably wasn't. At this point, I'm like, all right, at this point, I'm like, okay, this guy is definitely Charlie Chaplin. There's, there's just no way he's not the murderer. He's got a guitar. He's fucking got a bag. He's fucking just creepy as all fuck. This guy's definitely got problems. All right, so we will be in an accordance that while we're not sure all the various gentlemen that were traveling, if that was the same guy or not, this gentleman is definitely Charlie Chaplin, and he has landed here at this house with these ladies. Yeah, uh, yes, I agree on that. <laughs> Fine, that's and, all I need. That's what I right. That's what I really needed to have confirmed. The other ones, I don't care who that was, honestly. Yeah. As long as you agree that the guy who was the Charlie Chaplin did the stabbing and the killing ended up at this fucking house, or we're good let's move on yes yes i completely agree with that we cut back to chris and she uh pulls up to this house and she is uh looking for a guy named lewis um we uh find lewis and he is apparently just a, a nice guy who runs house uh, or runs a horse stable after his dad died and uh he uh you know even tells her that you know he only feels close when he's with the horses and then when he gets home he feels you know alone and all that good stuff that his dad's gone so uh but she takes a horse and uh she starts rolling out so i mean that's that's nice for her uh (laughs) Uh, we and, also need uh, to talk about the objectification of the actress Marisol, who I believe is a one name person as in Madonna, because I believe she was also a pop star at the time. Oh, wow. That's neat. Not uh, neat that she was objectified. The neat that she had one. Uh, she was like a one name person like Madonna. Right. Share. 
<laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah, so they're objectifying Marisol here in such a way. But at the same time, would you agree that her character is, I don't want to say infantilized, but she's definitely um, arrested development. She seems like she's in a very uh, naive and very like preteenish state mentally, don't you think? Yes, I agree. Okay. And at the same time, they're sexually objectifying her in such a way as to make sure that you can see her nipples through every single shirt while she's riding bikes over uh, rocky terrain and her on horseback. Yeah, I mean, that's not good either. <laughs> we need to acknowledge this. We need to... It's bad. We need to state how this is making us extremely uncomfortable, even though we're positive at the time Marisol was more than old enough for us to enjoy these, these scenes. In the context yeah. of the film, and then also what we learn later on within the film, this... Feels very fucking wrong to think about. Feels very wrong. <laughs> and to, we just need to acknowledge it and let's move on. All right. It's wrong and we're moving on. Uh, so, uh... Ruth then tells Barney, uh, they kind of flirt a little bit more. She says her stepdaughter is out riding and he needs to be gone by then. But they kind of have this like really kind of just close smile type thing going on, which seems a little weird. Uh, uh, sh- they're implying these two are going to fuck. Yeah. 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 There you go. Uh, I was trying to be, you know nice about it so uh chris then uh comes up to some road construction we're riding her horse they're building or completing a road through the town it seems uh and then uh uh let's see here ruth uh is asleep and uh she's kind of seems almost passed out and barney is just in pants no shirt you're like oh so they really did they must have fucked that or barney just likes walking around without a shirt on um He too punk chumped her for 20 bucks. Yeah, and he's definitely looking around. He's he's skeezing out the place, trying to see if he can find anything uh, worth anything. Uh, You know, later on, you kind of find out different stuff. But right now, we're not paying attention to that. Um, But he's looking around, and... um, see here then as he looks out the window he sees chris uh she's uh riding her bike back up uh well chris gets there and she looks around she sees kind of things are all kind of askew and then she looks at the side and she sees chris is out there chopping wood um she is kind of angry she goes to grab ruth and when she goes to check on Ruth, who's sleeping, uh, Ruth is nude in her bed in the middle of the day. Uh, there is uh, a, a, a bottle of booze uh, right next to her and uh, like just tons of cigarettes. So, you know, we, we know stuff happened. <laughs> it's obvious that they had a multiple all day bonathon session. Uh, they, 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 bo- they, yeah, yeah, they definitely, they, they, they boned all the time. <laughs> right and he should not be there and he's there chopping wood yep and he's not supposed to be there he's uh he's supposed to be gone but anyway so uh ruth then uh so ruth gets told that he's still there and so she confronts him and that's our next clip i told you to leave you've had your breakfast now get out how can i possibly leave after something as tasty as that huh? well the ham and eggs were great and a coffee. But I'm not satisfied yet. Your stepdaughter. I don't want you around here. You know, if I ever reach a ripe old age, and find women a drag, I'm going to have a car like this. With a uniform chauffeur. If you think you can dominate me, you're very much mistaken. Well, you've already dominated me. I'll do anything you want me to. I have enough problems. You have to leave. Nobody ever comes around here. Who's going to find out? Maybe I can help you out with a few things. Oh, boy. The old seduce your way into a warm bed and three hots. Yep. Wow, look at that guy. Just trying to act. He's he's, he's throwing around that uh, he's throwing around that energy, that gigolo energy. Can we uh, can we acknowledge that when he said something so tasty, he's staring right at poor Chris? Yeah, staring right at Chris. 
just being a real ooh, gross, gross, gross person. Well, the movie has already objectified Chris in our eyes, and now we are seeing this person who felt very greasy and wrong to us is now objectifying her. So I feel like the film might be scolding us a little bit, telling us that we're just as bad as him. Probably. Most of our films do that all the time. They always scold us along when we're trying to scold other people that they're scolding us. <laughs> That's a possibility, and I'm lost in the scold. So let's move on. <laughs> uh, anyway, so Barney, he does a lot of chores during the day. He's cutting law and all that. All the while, uh, they are, again, sexually objectifying Chris. She is sunbathing topless. Um, so, you know, congrats that you're, you're now uh, you're a pig, just like everyone else. Um, okay. Uh, we don't know what... <laughs> We don't know at this point while we're watching the film what we learn later on about Chris. Yeah. And so while that is extremely disturbing in post, at this point, you could still technically somewhat innocently enjoy somewhat of the nudity, but she's still infantilized a little bit and a little immature. So that's really uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and that's, I, a, that's a good enough way to put that. I, I don't know uh, if she's emotionally mature enough or... Or, like, if she's, like, just because she's regressed because she's been trapped in the house, so she's reverted oh, back. Yeah. Or or is she that regressed because she's, stu- you know, infantilized like she's still a child, you know? Jesus. You know, I wasn't really asking myself these questions, and now I am, and thanks. Jesus Christ. All right, well, that night, they're all hanging out, talking, and that's our next clip. Have you ever noticed how erotic children's stories and songs are? Nonsense. There's nothing erotic about that. My father thought so. He used to act Little Red Riding Hood with the puppets. Remember? Your father always had a flair for the absurd. Grandma was having an affair with a wolf, but the wolf was greedy. And seduced Red Riding Hood as well. And then, Grandma killed them both. Chris, please. What do you two women find to do, stuck in a place like this? As you can see, nothing. Ruth designs. I ride and sunbathe. For amusement, we spy on each other, don't we, Ruth? Stop it, Chris. We wait for someone who never arrives. We don't know whether we love or hate each other. And at night... That's enough. Go to your room at once. With him? Shall I go up with him? I know why you want him to stay. If you want to test me, you can. But warn him first of the danger. And that is the end of that 20 minutes. Okay, can we just talk about where her mind went with the story about Grandma killing them both? Can we just yeah. a- acknowledge what it is she's actually trying so, to say? That's why I took this. That's why I took this clip. Yes, I wanted to talk about this. Oh, well, go ahead then. You probably notated it such. Well, uh... Obviously, Chris is having some attraction to uh, bar- uh, the barnacle, and but she knows that, of course, Ruth has done shit, and now she's like, she does not trust Ruth at all. Uh, it does not seem, at least, uh, you know, not normally. So she's thinking, hey, you know, uh, the the wolf being barnacle is going to get greedy. Already had Ruth. It's going to try to get with Chris. Yeah, that's basically what she's flat out implying. But I think she's also saying it's time for you to make that pass because she's pissed yeah. and she's ready. Like, yeah. like this is a vengeance play on her part is how I took it. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Especially a vengeance play against. Yeah. Ex- I mean, especially because she's just she hate she it's so weird. She hates Ruth, but she needs Ruth. So it, it makes her angry that that's constantly what's happening to her. Yeah. It's a bizarre state of being for her, but it's true. That is exactly where she is. Yeah. And I'm I'm just like, holy shit. This is just a fucking uh, just, it's such a it gotta be such a hard way to live, man. You know, uh, it, it, the movie itself, it, it makes me feel shit. Cause it's like, oh my God, you feel her, her angst about she hates, hates this woman who she's living with, but absolutely positively needs her to live, it seems. Right. And we can't really go into it as to why just yet. But yeah, the, that's the beauty of the film is the entire time it's making you wonder, like, why do they even stay together? They hate each other so much. Yeah. You're, you're just, you're, but then you see her when like when it rained and she had those moments of stabbing that pillow and you're like okay so she obviously needs ruth to 
even just survive and oh man it's it's rough <laughs> yeah the film does I, not, I not take enjoy it easy. it no the film does not take it easy on you with the fucking drama and if you uh are someone like matt who actually you know has empathy and cares about people yeah. uh it's a really rough watch for you it, it really yeah it does not do you much good <laughs> <laughs> but not like in a it's a bad film way but more like a no. and it's so powerful and effective and depressing because of what it's story it's telling it, you way it makes you think a lot <laughs> yeah and it just keeps grinding in your brain yeah so this film is going to have a long lasting effect on your mental state whenever you think about it it's extremely powerful those are the words we're looking for here you say bad when I watched or depressing it, but or whatever but like yeah it kicks your butt when i watched it by the end of this moment I was exhausted already, already exhaused, just tired, because uh, not in a bad way. It's just, I'm, you know, holy shit, you know, how much emotion can you pack into something like that? I'm not here to feel feelings. <laughs> I'm here to review movies that are supposed to have boobs and blood in them. This is not what I signed up for, Court. Yeah, this is not, this is not what I'm about. <laughs> Hey, I'm not going to lie. How dare you? I'm not going to lie. I use the words melodrama and things like that at the beginning because of a sort of defense mechanism, because it does really elicit strong emotional responses. You start to really care about Chris. You start to really be concerned with her. You kind of hate Ruth for her torturing Chris, but at the same time, you kind of start feeling bad for Ruth because like the reason that Ruth is so miserable is because she is also trapped here because Chris needs her. But Chris isn't her child. They don't even like each other. And she was abandoned by her father. And Chris has to keep reminding her of that as well. Yeah. And I'm like, you probably shouldn't really do that. (laughs) (laughs) Right. They just keep going on and on. And they're in this endless torturous like loop with each other out in the middle of nowhere. And it's become this feedback where it's obvious that Chris is not going to get better. Yeah, it's it's definitely obvious that there's just no way Chris is going to not get any better right now. Not in this environment. And, and I don't think she's there to get better in this environment. No, I think at this point, I'm starting to believe that she's just being kept out of the way. And she's basically been granted stay at home here, but only here at this home under the supervision of Ruth is what I'm yeah. convinced of at this point. And that letter is basically confirming that there hasn't been any incidents or whatever, you know, and to continue the course of treatment. So this far, because if she steps out of line, if she hurts somebody, I think she's going back in Mm -hmm. the reason that i bring this up the reason that i bring this up is because there's some decisions that are made later on i believe to not necessarily use chris as a weapon but um i believe that there is a an attempt to get chris out of the way and also use her to get vengeance at the same time later on yeah i think so and i believe the reason for that is that the only reason she is not in an asylum at this point uh is because she's allowed to stay at this manor under Ruth's supervision. That's 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 what I've inferred in this twenty minutes. She even at one point said uh, I shouldn't. I should have stayed in the asylum. Right. So it's. I know that she was in an asylum. She says that she should have stayed there. But my thought is at this point, and the thing that I'm inferring, because they don't necessarily say it, but I heavily believe at this point that Ruth has the power to send her back, but can't bring herself to do it, and then tries to hijack and or cause Chris to do something to force her to send herself back. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, basically to make it to where they have no choice, she has to go back in just to get her off of her hands i believe that's the path that ruth is going to take after this that could be yeah yeah um oh jesus christ it's still a heel program no matter what but what i'm saying is what looks like something that's supposed to be extremely sinister i don't believe is as sinister as it appears to be and we'll we'll get once we get into it we'll talk about it more all right sounds good uh well let's start the next 20 um they they lock up the house every night and Ruth tells Barney how once a worker got locked in there but when they left for the year, and because he couldn't get out, he died there. So, holy fuck, you know, there's some dark energy already in this house. Um, yeah, there's some bad shit going bit. on in here. Yeah. They start making out a bit, and then uh, uh, that night we see Chris is kind of listening at their door, and Barney and Ruth are talking about Chris's dad, and that's our next clip. I can't stand you any longer. Goodbye. What's all that about? Can't you guess? A farewell note. Your husband. My husband. And you read it 
every night. When I met him, he was traveling around Surrey with a puppet show. He'd already abandoned his Spanish wife. He was always a tramp. <laughs> Just like me. We uh, have a special charm, don't we? I taught him how to dress, how to eat, how to behave like a civilized man. And then after eight years... I can't stand you any longer. Goodbye. You didn't do a very good job on him, did you? Men are all the same. I learned the hard way, but now I know how to handle them. He left me right here, sleeping. We just made love. He took all the money he could find, credit cards, traveler's checks. But he never found what he was really looking for. I had it well hidden. He was never very bright anyway. Are you? I make out the best I can. He left me alone here with his daughter. Sooner or later, he'll come back for her. And then what happens? He'll find her very much changed. Then we'll be even. Come over here. You're good looking, ambitious, and totally immoral. I can't complain. My stepdaughter's attractive, isn't she? Very. Her bedroom door's never locked. What did she try to warn me about? Why don't you find out for yourself? Sometimes at night, when it rains, she has nightmares. She calls for me. Next time, why don't you go? I think I'm going to amuse myself around here. We can all amuse ourselves. So, not good. Bad. It's real bad. Uh, Nefarious plans are in action. Yes. Uh, well, the next day, uh, Chris and Barney are watching the car, and we get a mail call, and Chris wants the mail so she can see it, and Barney kind of keeps keep away, but she gets it. But nothing from her dad, so she pouts a little bit. Uh, Barney is reading the newspaper, and there's a headline about the woman that was killed. Apparently, that was the seventh victim. Chris and Barney are driving into town. They see Lewis. He's, he's heading into town as well. Um... They are at a store, and uh, Chris buys a, uh, not Chris, uh, Barney buys a, uh, a stuffed animal for a little boy, and his, do his money has a hole in it, and then he also buys a, a little doll, or little, like, plush bear for uh, for Chris. Uh, this family, they're talking to Chris, and they're going to go visit uh, Ruth, and so when Chris and Barney leave, uh, they're like, she's like, she doesn't want to go back right away, so they go to watch a movie. Um or actually, before that, they leave, and then there's this man who's really interested in the money that Chris gave the uh, uh, the shopkeeper with the hole in it. Okay, for those of us that remember the stab wound to the hand and there was an envelope yeah. full of money underneath it, we know what that fucking means. Yes, exactly. It's, I mean, we're not, let's not play around here. If you fucking yeah. notice that, which you fucking should have, come on. Yes, That's exactly. what that means. So now we have it pretty much confirmed that while he may not have actually done the stabbing, he has crossed paths paths with the person that did for sure and somehow got money off of them yes yep exactly but more than likely uh, he did it because he fucking did it but more yeah he that motherfucker had to have done it right yeah um he's the only suspect that could have done that one but they mistaken his specific murder of that woman when dressed as charlie chaplin with murders that actually are going on where houses are being robbed and people are being murdered yep yeah yeah well um they go to a movie in the beginning of the movie it's like a memorial to the woman who was stabbed at the beginning. She's a famous singer. And uh, the one of the final things they show of her is that her most favorite number, her most famous number, was that uh, a Charlie Chaplin number, where she dressed up as Charlie Chaplin. And you notice uh, that uh, our man there is given the side eye to the TV while he's seeing that and looking real nervous and scared. Yeah. Luis then shows up, and uh, so does the man who is inquiring about the money. So uh, it's 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 getting a little thick in there. Um, 
Uh, so, uh, then that night they, uh, get home and that family left them a rabbit, uh, the, uh, like a fucking house rabbit, but Ruth doesn't want it. And so they're going to go ahead and kill it. And because it wouldn't survive out on its own. And so, uh, uh, Barney with one like Miyagi like karate chop kills the fucking rabbit. Right. And uh, first of all, it was a farm raised rabbit for food. Oh, okay. Um, they were given the freshest version of the rabbit they possibly could, meaning the live rabbit. They were supposed to eat it. She just wanted to let it go. They can't do that. And so its only purpose could have been to become a pet for them. They could have kept it around the house as a pet instead and not killed him. Yeah. But yeah. instead they decided to eat him and that's why Barney fucking karate chops him. Whether or not that was real, I don't know and I can't tell, but it was fucking disturbing. It was very disturbing. Well, later on that night, uh, Chris is outside and Barney asks if like she's scared of him and she says no and they kind of have a moment um and uh uh so then um the next day they kind of uh run around uh during the day uh riding horses riding bikes and having a good old time and uh they fall into like this little pile and they start making out a bit and right as they do that uh she uh chris has once again these visions of this big sweaty dude and it's not good and she's like she needs space uh and that's the end of that 20 minutes so not good all right so the implication is even more that chris we see her as a very much little girl in then we see the sweaty barbarian looking barbell lifting dude looking at her and then we see a reaction of a grown-up chris wincing and terrified and the implication is that something really bad happened at the hands of this man to her at that young age of a little girl yeah it's yeah it's that's <laughs> just so heavily applied <laughs> right it's getting implied to the point now where you're like god damn it movie do not stack this on top of all the other fucking heartache you're throwing my way right now yeah i can't i can't handle this shit right now uh <laughs> i'm not into it yeah dude do not stir this up. I don't need any more drama, all right? Seriously, I just watched Nurse Jackie, and I cannot handle any more drama right now. I can't Nurse Jackie. I just can't handle anymore. There we go. I can't handle any more fucking drama. Like, they were implying it. But, like, at this point, yeah. I'm dreading that they're going to make me fucking witness it, Matt. Yeah, me too. Uh, and I'm almost positive they're going to at this point. I'm, I'm not happy about it. Uh, but it's just the thought I'm getting. This movie has so far not been kind and, and you know sparing feelings. So yeah, uh, let's let's move on then because it's that's a good dour situation to be thinking about as we move into the yes. next couple of moments. All right. Well, the next twenty minutes uh, this starts uh, later that night. Ruth and Chris go uh, down to the cellar because Ruth needs help finding some prints. Uh, Chris sees the old puppet stand that her dad used to run his puppet shows on. And she had visions of those puppet shows happening and her and her dad watching them together. Or, well, her watching them that her dad was doing. Um, Ruth, uh, then talks to her and cautions her against, uh, getting too friendly, I guess you would say, with Barney. Saying he'll be gone uh, before you know it. Uh, he'll just leave. Uh, he's just a traveler. Um, so, and uh, then uh, uh, Ruth heads upstairs, and we see this rain starts. So, of course, Chris is now starting to obviously freak a little bit because it's starting to rain. Um, then Barney's getting ready to go to bed, but Ruth said, "Hey, you promised to do some things. Uh, go." She's uh, Chris is going to start needing help soon. Uh, I want you to go downstairs and help her. So, uh, Chris, uh, Barney goes down there to see, and she is freaking out, calling out for Ruth to come help her. Uh, Ruth is just standing upstairs, not doing anything, almost seems to be enjoying, uh, this poor young lady's, uh, dread. Um, as Barney tries to help her, she tries to take a stab at Barney a few times, but then we hear her scream, and she just passes out, probably just out of sheer fucking, uh, scared you know just being scared enough to pass out could be adrenal just, fatigue as well if her flight yeah or fight reflexes were going so far she probably burnt herself out Pro yeah exactly so i mean that's fucking sad 
Uh, there is definitely no question that something horrible happened to Chris. Yeah. <laughs> something real bad. Right. And, and unfortunately, we're getting ready to probably, you know, say hi to it. And that's not going to be enjoyable either. <laughs> Okay, well, I won't say anything and we'll just move on. Thank you. So Barney brings her up from the cellar and lays her down. And at this point, Chris sees that and freaks out. She tells Barney to get out. And Barney's like, fuck you. You know, what the fuck's wrong with you? Why are you like this? And uh, she's just fucking freaking out on Barney, like real fucking bad. Uh, is she? And he's like, I don't know what your fucking problem is, uh, but... You know, you got to settle it down. And then she gets out a gun and starts shooting at him. So he leaves. And while he's outside, he's like pretty much like telling her, you know, you were a piss poor lay, all that kind of shit and throwing rocks at the windows and smashing Uh, them. Yes. And smashing them. But she eventually leaves and Chris even is like, hey, you know, we don't have to worry anymore. Uh, he, He can't, you know, we're alone again. He can't hurt us. And you're just kind of like, okay, that seems a bit weird, right? Um, and again, it seems a little too, uh, a little too friendly, I guess. A little too, what's the word, romantic for somebody who's supposed to be taking care of somebody when they're, when they're, uh, when they, when they have PTSD like that. All right. So we're kind of hinting at a, an extremely inappropriate love triangle that's going on here. And by love triangle, I mean everybody's going to be fucking everybody eventually. Yeah. Um, it seems to me that yes, Chris and Ruth are having a lurid love affair that is heavily implied but not shown uh, that's going on and I believe that this is obviously not something that's part of her therapy if you will this is just abuse uh, and I, Definitely. I've also kind of come to the conclusion that after severe trauma like this where she's having a flashback of what happened or she's being triggered by the rain and the thunderstorm and then the lights going out those sort of things that are happening that, that do create that terror of remembering something that happened to her perhaps she is even more willing to run back to ruth if you will and so ruth is not necessarily jealous of the idea of sharing the dude she just doesn't want to share chris well it's also maybe she's like she doesn't know what she wants to do with chris there's part of her that wants to stick to this plan of destroying chris and then when it's actually happening she starts to feel bad because she spent so much time with chris so she's like, well, what, what now? What am I supposed to do? You know, th- now she starts caring for. Her. Yeah. And maybe it's just this weird, twisted, sadomasochistic relationship that has some kind of weird sexual overtones to it. Maybe they're just implying that stuff. But I do believe that bad things happen in that lonely manor house. And I, oh, yeah. I also believe that Ruth torments her in such a way is because it results in better sex for Ruth later. Maybe. Jesus Christ, man. Some fucked up shit going on around here. When the dude showed up and nothing was happening to Chris. Yeah. It's not until he stops getting interest in Ruth and starts getting interesting interest in Chris and putting machinations and moves on her. And I don't think, again, that she cares so much about the dude. She doesn't at all. She'd rather him be gone than have him touch Chris. I think so as well. But at the same time, yeah. I think she was trying when they were locked down in the basement. The last thing I need to say here, when they were locked down in the basement, that is her trying to get Chris back in the asylum. And when she, when that backfires, she just gets angry and throws the guy out because he actually didn't get hurt but I, I don't even know if she's trying to get her back in the asylum or she's trying to break her completely so when her dad does eventually come back for her, he, he he has a very his daughter is destroyed if he would even care but i mean i don't know if that's yeah, whatever the motivation was she definitely was hoping for him to get hurt down there by chris that's was that's what she yeah. was hoping um, yes my yes. thought my thought was to get the at first to get the guy alone with her and then have that manner and then she can have all the fun that she wants until the husband comes back mm-hmm. yeah it, something's happening here but I, I i just can't pinpoint it but she, i think to me it's chris has a, a plan she had this plan husband left her I, I i don't think it's just him i think men as a whole have disappointed uh uh chris and Ruth, this, this Chris one's is the gonna, child. Or I'm sorry, uh, Ruth. And I think this one was going to pay with his daughter's life, kinda. Because yeah, this is this is what you get. And now she's because she spent so much time with Chris. Ruth has grown to care for her, but she also needs this plan. So she is 
at a crossroads of what she wants. And she was starting to get it because Chris was really starting to break, especially with Barney around. And when Ruth saw that, she she flipped for some reason on herself. Like, her own plan is no good anymore. Okay, well, you're saying to get her to really, really break. What do you think the ultimate result is going to be if she really breaks? She's going to go back to the asylum she, and... But I don't think he she wants her back. She wants that girl still in that house when the father comes back. So... Just to be like canatonic, maybe even at, at best. Oh, you know what I mean? Okay, so if her sweet revenge so, is to make you know, her you're as not sick violent as anymore. Gotcha. Yeah, not violent anymore. Just catatonic, so she won't be any more trouble. She was hoping for at least her to for Chris to kill him down there. At the very least, yeah. she was hoping for something along those lines, or for him to get hurt, or for something to happen um, along those lines to get Chris off of her hands, or in your state, like even more wrecked and destroyed before the father comes back. Like something like that. I, yeah. I think criminal charges before the father comes back would also be just fine for her. So I think, but, but then I think she still is like, now she's like, Oh my God, but now I don't want that to happen. And, or do I want it to happen? And she is just, she just doesn't know what she wants. <laughs> yeah. Cause we certainly don't. Let's move on. Yeah. Right. And we're fucking, I'm lost. Uh, all right. So that night, then we see this, person uh walks into uh a cattle barn uh it grabs it's raining heavily yeah uh, this person grabs a, a slicker a black slicker uh raincoat pretty much some gloves and then grabs a fucking like a sickle for lack of a better word and no that's a sickle uh, where it's a sickle uh uh, it calms down a dog that comes barking at it and pets the dog and just, you know, and then it moves over. And then we see that farm family from before and they're all kind of getting ready for bed, having a having a jolly good night. Um, And everyone's getting ready for bed. And then the little boy looks outside and sees this man standing there and he thinks it's a monk out in the uh, uh, out in the rain and so he even says hey you know there's telling his siblings there's a monk out in the rain and the siblings are like oh well you should let him in don't let him sit out there so he sneaks past his parents and he opens up unlocks the door and the killer or the, this man walks in and he but the little boy hides behind the door as it's being opened well they the parents feel a draft the dad goes to check it out and he gets his throat slit mom gets killed uh big brother and big sister walk out they get fucking murdered everyone's getting killed and we see the killers starting to look for money and all of a sudden the little boy's toy starts going off it's like a drummer and the killer walks up and he slices and fucking dices it's heavily implied we don't see it and i'm bummed yeah but it's oh dude no you don't want to see that my love of dead kids god damn <laughs> <laughs> um so anyway uh we cut to now an officer is being interviewed and that's our next clip commissioner how many victims were there five the entire family within two years six similar crimes have been committed within a radius of 100 kilometers do you think these crimes were committed by the same person there's no doubt about it the killer has to be right here in this town now what makes you say that because several bills have been passed that have a cut in the center and blood has been found on them. Is there any truth to the rumor that you've ordered a roundup of all young vagrants with packs and guitars? A vagrant with a pack and a guitar was spotted near the sites of all the crimes. We've already made more than 200 arrests, but I don't anticipate any positive results. Our mobile camera teams have been at the scene of the crime since yesterday. The commissioner, who has taken personal charge of the investigation, was interviewed by special report. Within two years, six similar killings have taken place within a radius of 100 kilometers. Do you think these crimes were committed by the same person? There's no doubt about it. The killer has to be right here in this town. The commissioner's statement is obviously of paramount importance. How did he arrive at this conclusion? Here is his reply. A vagrant with a pack and guitar was spotted near the sites of all the crimes. Nevertheless, the commissioner later stated that despite the numerous arrests of suspicious individuals, no positive results have for the moment been obtained. Another detail which may be significant is that the dog, the family pet, waits in vain for the return of his master, raised no alarm, nor frightened off the criminal. Could this mean that the murderer was a member of the family circle or a friend of the victims, known and familiar to the dog? In any event, the farmhouse murders, as it is now called, 
occupies a focal point in the national interest. The entire country is deeply moved and outraged by this bloody, almost unprecedented crime. One of the farm workers raised the alarm and immediately the police and ambulance services were alerted. Our cameras were present to provide graphic testimony of the tragedy. The images are sufficiently eloquent of the pathos of the scene. Let us now hear the declarations of the commissioner in charge of the investigation. And the motive? Money. The criminal could be content with robbery, but death excites him. He's no longer able to resist the urge to kill, and he'll continue to do so. Is the killer insane? This is a question many people must be asking. Not only in this region, where so many similar crimes have been committed, but throughout the country. Let us now listen to the opinion of an expert, Professor Gordon. He is not exactly insane. When he is captured, I'm sure we shall find that his is a typical case of chromosome abnormality. The duplication of chromosome Y creates a criminal tendency. The Boston Strangler was a double Y, so it's man. I think that double Y thing has since been disproven, but that was a big thing in the 70s. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, during, uh, by the way, that's the end of that 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, um, it, it's being more obvious that there is um, more than one killer. One is yes. one is set to fully in, intend to rob, and that's it. And our dude who almost died at the hands of Chris was the one who killed the other lady, but she was confused. So there's two killers that we know of for sure. There's two different killers anyway. You think? <laughs> yes. Yes. There are two different killers. Um. Anyway, we spent the next 20 minutes... Uh, we started that out. Chris and Ruth are locking up the place. Chris says that uh, that he actually wanted her to go with him. And she's kind of like really kind of disturbed by everything. And Ruth is like, don't worry about it. Just best to forget it. He's gone. They go to bed. And that night we see Barney's actually in the cellar. He's hiding out in the cellar. Well, he gets up and he gets the keys uh, from the drawer area to lock up the house. And he finds the gun. Uh, so he locks everything up and then we see Ruth wakes up and she sees him doing all this. So she's able to go hide out in Chris's room and tells Chris that he's probably, sounds like he's in the library looking for something. And that the best idea right now is for Chris to, for lack of a better word, distract him because, uh, she knows it, that he fancies Chris and that she'll try to find a way to get out or get, call the police or something. Oh, we need to, uh, so we need to also state they're panicking so much because they've, yeah. because of the new murder, they've heard they've that been, a man with a guitar, a man with a guitar, a man with a guitar, and yeah. they think it's him. Yes. And he just broke into their house, which is also fucking terrifying. And he's locking them in, which is extremely fucking terrifying. So no one gets out once you're locked in. Right. You know. Yeah. And th what they're essentially doing here and setting up, I mean, it's obvious what is happening. He, whatever he's got planned, it's not good. So whether or not he actually is the murderer, they are justified in being terrified and trying to come up with a plan to defend themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. De definitely. Big time. Um. So, uh, anyway, he's in the library. Chris kind of freaks out on Ruth a bit. You know, she doesn't want to do it. She'd rather die, but then calms down a bit. Uh, then, uh, as Barney's kind of like tearing up some fucking the couch, uh, he hears the door open and he sees Chris standing there and she's in like a, like a nightgown type stings. And he pretty much tells her the first time he ever saw her, he, all he wanted to do was make love to her. And, uh, they get into the room and he's like, Hey, where's Ruth? And she's like, probably still sleeping. And they hug and she's like, I thought you said, yeah, you'd take me with you. And he goes, why are you back here? And he goes, I'm going to rob her. And, and he goes, and I came back for you. I wanted to be with you. Um, so they, uh, they, they, they start to, you know, uh, get down to a little bit of the business and they start to make it out. Ruth goes around. She finds her gun is in the counter, but it is empty. The, he unloaded the gun. Um, so it's kind of weird. Is he here to kill them? Because when he just keep like a fully loaded gun on him, if that was the case. Um, but, uh, then Ruth is kind of looking around and then Chris, he starts, uh, or, uh, Chris starts having visions of her in the shower. Uh, she was that little girl and this is all the while, uh, she's making out like they're, oh, 
pretty much having sex with uh, uh, Barney. But she's having visions of that big burly man finds her in the shower and begins raping her. So that's his... Chris's trauma, which is just fucking terrible, uh, and you feel just fucking horrible. Um, and it's triggered every time of the rainstorm because it reminds her of the shower with the rain falling on yeah, top of shower. her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, then we come back to Ruth. She finds a knife in the kitchen, and she's like, okay, well, she has something. Well, as things are progressing along, Chris grabs a knife from her bedstand and uh, stabs Barney in the back right as Ruth comes in and also stabs him. They both take turns stabbing him, and he's like, holy shit, and he's able to run and get away when the power goes out. But uh, as they kind of, there's like some cat and mouse games there, but then they're able to find him, and they do a full-on stab-a-thon on him. He's still able to get up, and he stumbles, stumbles into a big kind of clock. He falls, the clock falls. All of a sudden, all these jewels pour out of the clock. But uh, he he dead. He's definitely dead. Uh, that was so fucking so, brutal. Uh, he falls out. Yeah, he's dead. Brutal death. That's the end of that 20 minutes. Jesus Christ, that was so fucking brutal. Oh, my God. When they found him, when he was hiding. I mean, that was horrific. <laughs> yeah. And they just stabbed and stabbed and stabbed. It was like fucking Manson-esque levels of yeah. stabbing, man. Oh, my God. I should You're say like, Manson Jesus, family-esque. Man. Yeah. That was intense. Yeah, you did. Uh, yeah. All right, so it made you wade through a lot of interpersonal stuff, and it was slowly but surely revealing a trauma that may have caused such arrested development. She may very well be trapped in that state. She may not have been able to mentally progress beyond it of yeah. those early teen years. And knowing that, in retrospect, watching the movie again or talking about any implied uh, heavily <laughs> exploitative shots of Marisol in this film... Makes it really yeah. uncomfortable for us to be seeing Chris in such a manner after all of this. Mm-hmm. But I get what it is that they are doing. Uh, this is kind of a Lolita sort of wink and a nod kind of story. And they're trying to be really lurid with everything. But then they do this play with <laughs> sexualizing her and trying to make her also ultra young and teeny bopper at the same time. And then you learn what you learn about her at the very end of the film. And so anything that they were doing pre- previously to titillate you that may have worked on you against your better judgment makes Mm -hmm. you instantly feel like a horrible human being once they go that route yeah you don't feel good no more (laughs) yeah this film it takes its time and slowly strips away all of these points of the characters until you're positive that they are who you thought they were and this is 100% a heel program uh (laughs) 100% (laughs) 100% heel program yeah, there, there's no, there ain't a face to be found around here. I mean, maybe Chris is kind of a face, but everyone else is a heel program. Yeah, I could see the argument that Chris can't be 100% to blame um, for her actions because she is, in fact, mentally ill. Yeah. Um, Because of what has happened to her. But at the same time, that's kind of... <sighs> I don't know. It's also a little cliche at the same time, but maybe not in the 70s, but even then in the 70s, I think it kind of was, <laughs> you know, like uh, she's, yeah. she's so traumatized by this event. But that happened still, to her. she's never gotten quite the help for her trauma. No. She's never got help. And she she was failed by a medical system that gave her to a person who was using her for their own means and not for her actual health. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking, it's dark and it's twisted. And so I I would give Chris kind of a pass around here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but even still, um, Chris's stabbing at this point was not from. I don't think that was coming from the place of her reacting to um, her past trauma. I think that is her lashing out and finding that killing men makes her feel better about her past trauma and i that could get there but i'm just saying that you know I- i'm willing to give her a pass a little bit more at this right. point but what i'm what i'm saying is that may have been the intention that ruth has mm-hmm. had all along and maybe that she is grooming her to murder every man on site so Including that in her own father so that when father finally comes home that'll be the final justice yeah, that that could be it too. Yeah, I mean, I don't that, think that I can definitely see. I don't think her plan could quite get that nefarious, but like, I mean, I wouldn't put it past her at the same time. Hey, man, she is not a very happy person, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't put it past her. 
Look, I thought I was vengeful, and I thought that I held a grudge, but Ruth has me beat. Yeah, man, you ain't got nothing on Ruth. Uh, let's move on. All right, uh, well, we start the final 20 minutes. Ruth tells him as the man lays there dead, they've they got to get help. They got to call the cops. Uh, remember to say that, you know, he was going to kill them. That's why they had to do what they did. Um, uh, you know, all this other kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, getting the story straight. Um, and as Ruth goes to call the cops, uh, Chris actually holds, uh, the man's hand. Uh, you know, uh, the dead man's hand trying to, I don't know, just comfort him or what. I mean, he's dead. I don't know what, what there is to comfort, but she, he's, he's holding his hand. She also may not be able to process or understand what has happened and may not realize yeah. that he actually is dead yeah yeah uh, that that could also be another good one um so anyway uh they're getting to the car they're heading out and all of a sudden the whole town is like right in front of their house they're all driving and they're like what the hell's going on and they're like they caught him they caught the guy and they're like okay and uh they they follow that and holy shit um it's lewis lewis was the killer of the family um the the crowd is freaking out why why and he pretty much just goes i don't know what they're freaking out about i need the money to help my my to help my uh, my horse ranch hey, uh, to take care so, of the horses he was doing it to take care of the horses yeah he, he was slaughtering families to make sure that his horses were taken care of because it's the only thing that reminds him of his dad yeah which okay so he's doing all the immediate families around him in the valley but he didn't do the lady that was much further no, away that, for sure. i'm under the belief that was definitely uh barnacle uh the, yeah that was that was uh barney that was definitely barney who did the the first woman yeah so it just so happens we got two murderers in this town right so uh that makes the next group of decisions and um how the film ends extremely interesting so i'm gonna just shut the fuck up and let that all happen all right well um anyway uh the ladies talk and that's our final clip then who have we killed and for what He'd just been released from prison. He knew your father. Now I understand everything. He sent him. Perhaps he came looking for me. He didn't come for you. He came for this. You didn't mean a thing to him. He'd have left you rotting in a clinic without lifting a finger. He wanted me to go away with him. Perhaps he really wanted to. You know what he wanted. They always want the same thing. Always. Bruce, I think I will go away. Where? No place special. But here it rains too much. I don't want to stay with you. But you're not well. Who'll take care of you? You need me. You've won, Ruth. You've beaten me. Don't say that, Chris. Please. Please don't ever say that. Your father hurt me terribly. You don't know how I came to hate him. It's, it's true. I wanted to corrupt you, destroy you. It, it was the only way I could get even with him. But now, Chris, I don't even hate him anymore. I feel so lonely, Chris. I need you. I need you more than you need me. All the worse for you. Chris, we killed a man. The two of us, we killed a man. I'll try not to suffer for that. I promise you. If you leave me, I'll go to the police. I'll tell them everything. You won't, and you know it. Chris, I couldn't stand to be alone. Please don't leave. Please don't. It would be amusing if, after all, I turned out to be the stronger. <laughs> What do we do with him? We must wait until nightfall. Damn, and in one line, Chris goes from the the one who is, 
you know, um, the subservient needy one to almost the leader. She's killed. She's found the thing that will make her feel better, dude. Yeah, I guess. Damn. Well, uh, the ladies, what they do is they bury him in the road construction area. Uh, they're like, D- and, uh, Ruth wonders if it'll work. And she goes, I guess we'll see until tomorrow. Uh, but, uh, and then, so then they check it out. The workers show up, they bury over the body. They put the fucking shit down and, uh, the, the, the asphalt and the tar and they build a road over this motherfucker. So there you go. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, do you know how roads are, are built, Matt? Uh, 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 kinda, but uh, you may want to just go ahead and let me know. Okay, so in order to lay something level and flat, you have to tamp down the soil and then sometimes apply sand or an aggregate of some sort that can also be tamped down so that you don't have your pavement shifting or yeah. anything underneath. You want a nice level, flat area that is nice and ready to go for you to lay your pavement over or whatever is going to be, even if it's just fucking asphalt. Uh-huh. All right, so when you bury something that deep with that much stuff, what we're about to see at the ending is complete and utter bullshit shit and i need to state that now because got to talk about an alternate ending as well so here we go all right well uh what happened is uh obviously um so anyway the ladies bury him as we said in the road construction area uh and all of a sudden, uh, the road's there, and as time goes by, we see a lot of grass, and the, the, the road starts to crack, and a lot of grass comes up, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, some workers come to check it out. And as they're checking out, we uh, as they're checking out, everything that happens here uh, is going to uh, be mixed in with the girls swimming, living their best lives. Um so anyway, uh, the guys are like, well, the, there's something going on with the road here and they start digging and they're like, you know, uh, the road sunk. That's what's causing this problem. And they're fixing it. All of a sudden the guy sees something, grabs a cop, a uh, motorcycle cop. That cop looks at what they found. He takes off. Uh, the cops are riding out, uh, you know, sirens of blame as the two ladies just look out into the distance. Roll credits. <laughs> First of all, he was buried so deep, I do not think the bean sprouts that were in him that were growing off of him or were in his clothing or whatever would have come up and broke the ground. Also, he was okay. he was buried so deep and everything would have been tampered that if were things to shift enough, he would have been crushed by the weight of the giant fucking steamroller that tamps down the road area. And then also the weight of everything on top of him would have probably crushed him as well. Unless hmm. unless the girls didn't dig deep enough and just laid him like just barely under the road before the pavement happened, which I kind of believe, sure. But let me tell you about an alternative alternative ending that's on the disc that should have been in the film instead in my opinion i'm listening it's cut back and forth with the roadway the road crew doing the road paving and all of that stuff and then it cuts back and forth with the roadway area where he supposedly is their happy life the roadway area their happy life credits what okay say that one again yeah no <laughs> their happy life happy life happy life the roadway no cracks no dropouts uh, nothing just the road oh. stay and put and be in itself and they just ride on huh yeah they live out their creepy weird psychotic codependent life or they Damn. keep doing this i don't know which but that's a much better fucking ending yeah that's some hardcore shit right there yeah the bean sprouts <laughs> is kind of stupid to me yeah i can see that yeah, I can see that uh, when the, when all of a sudden things start growing, and I'm like, okay, but why? Why why are they growing? <laughs> it seems weird. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I'm I'm I don't really know how much more I need to say about the film because we really do have to talk about the moments that are happening. Um, and we've already mm-hmm. we've really really said it. It's an extremely powerful film. It's very well made. It's gorgeously fucking shot. Uh, but it is an endurance run because it will leave you exhausted. Just talking about it tonight, even though I know you were on a call, I'm fucking exhausted too. Like I feel it. Yeah. I totally understand why you were. <laughs> as worn out as you are trying to do the review of the movie and trying to write down all the notes and keep track of everything that's happening because there's so much story there's so much interpersonal drama and you really do start to engage with the characters you may not like them but your empathy is kicked up into overdrive for them in multiple scenes and i kind of want to agree with you i i think chris is always the victim in all of this and what we're seeing is the actual corruption of chris miller they're not referring to to the horrible assault of Chris Miller. This is the corruption, the entirety of what we're seeing yeah. in the film. It was Ruth's uh-huh. plan. 
Yes, I think so. Ruth's plan was to be the corruption of her. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, and it's just, it's a, abuse of essentially a mental patient that's left under your care. Who, yeah. Who, uh, who's also nothing else than a sexual assault fuck. survivor. Just for your own pleasure, you're doing this? What? Just, yeah. Just, just because her dad fucking pissed you off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's dark. Uh, it's really well made. It's an excellent fucking film. Uh, it's going to hit you heavy. It's going to just stomp on your genitals, but leave its foot there and twist it a little. Yeah. If that's, oh, yeah. Emotionally, Definitely. emotionally speaking. Uh, and if that's the kind uh, of ride you're looking for, that's what you're going to get out of the corruption of Chris Miller. That's what you want, man. You can have it. <laughs> it's fucking excellent. I'm fucking bummed out. Let's fucking end it. Yes. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema Psyops, Cinema B, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. That is Mike Ness covering the Bob Dylan song of Don't Think Twice, It's All Right. Now, if you listen very closely to the lyrics of that song, for those of you that are on the Pirate Radio Edit, I want you to go back and listen very closely. It's kind of the story of how the ending of this movie actually happens. Because <laughs> he ends up on the dark side of the road, if you know what I mean. God oh, damn. I think you know what I mean, and I'm pretty sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> there was another line in there too about um she's the reason that he's traveling on in other words like on to the great beyond and all that like the lyrics fit really well with them fucking murdering him and burying him under a road but it works even better nice. when in your brain they get away with it so just remember that's the actual positive ending of the film that i see it <laughs> yeah they, they got away from with it because <laughs> that guy was still kind of an asshole so <laughs> he was gonna fucking kill them they just shouldn't have disposed with a body and done with the consequences i bet they would i bet he was gonna take chris with her i bet with him i bet that was true <laughs> i don't know but we're done reviewing the film if you want to find yeah, yeah, we're done. if you want to find any of the other instances in the 320 previous episodes of this show where we may or may not have continued reviewing the view of the film at the ending of the show legionpodcast.com <laughs> forward slash cinema dash science i know that's happened a handful of times at least oh it had to have yeah our show is also represented on instagram whenever it hasn't crashed in the middle of some kind of weird hearing having to do with Big Daddy Zuckerberg's Facebook. Yeah, right. 
Our meme repository there on Instagram is cinema underscore psyops. Now, what remained up all day on October 4th, weirdly enough, was Twitter, where you can find a couple of tweets of a couple of twats because of that porn bot heaven. I'm at court underscore psyop there, and he is at psyop Matt. We also have our Facebook group whenever Facebook is actually active and not crashed. Uh, Facebook don't work no more. What are you talking about? Cinema psyops. I am court psyops there, and Matt exists in a frame where you can tag him in post, but he's not really there. Matt Psyop. These are facts. If These you, are facts. If you actually want to get a response to your email, just email feedback to court, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. There's no point in giving you the address anymore. No. Well, while you're out there traveling on your own road, try not to think about all the people <laughs> that may be underneath it and kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch. I'm trying to get over my shoulder So, I don't know what the fuck fucking happened to my Skype, but, like, it fucking lost everything. Like, every fucking setting I ever had. Wow. Yeah. That must have been a big update. Something. Yeah, it fucking blew away shit from my USB uh, interface, too, that I was using. Holy shit. I'm so sorry. That's so fucking Look, crazy. You're fine. Don't worry about it. You gave <laughs> me some time to wind down. Yeah, I figured you could use the break, and then I'm like, God damn it, what the fuck? What the fuck is going on? I'm just, like, <laughs> screaming. I'm going to probably include that if all of that got caught on my mic, because I was really fucking <laughs> oh, yeah. livid. I should probably start recording. One, two, three. Yay. Okay, so now you're definitely yeah, recording. I am definitely recording, and it's picking up my mic. <laughs> Uh, I love that we have these little games that our anxieties make us play now for our, like, <laughs> yeah. show checklist. Well, that, that last time, but apparently it didn't pick up my mic, and now I'm all fucking, I get all nervous about it. Holy shit, you had the same number of clips that you did last time, and it recognized them because of the naming scheme. That trick finally worked for once. <laughs> well, it's about damn time. Spoiler alert, it's not just so I play them in order, but that numbering scheme, as long as you have the same number, all I have to do is delete the ones that are gone and then add the ones that are supposed to. This is the first yeah. fucking week that's actually fucking worked. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. When I try to play them, if it plays one of the ones from last week, like like it did, that's what happened whenever... Uh, you remember when the clips for Jennifer played on the, ne the following week's episode? I can't remember. Oh, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember even what happened, the, which one that happened in, but that's what happened was it was playing the older files because... They didn't fully delete it, found them in the trash can somehow. Weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want that program to get there. Or maybe it was just it was referenced to be deleted, but was still technically in the location. Or who knows how Mac does their weird shit. Yeah, well, that's also true. <laughs> All right. I got my stuff. You're recording on your side. I think we're good to go. Uh, yeah. Let me, uh, I just got to bring up my clip shows. And you did Corruption of Chris Miller, correct? Please tell me that's the Yes, okay. of course. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I'm sorry. Oh, it was all right. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was like a nice little murder mystery, I guess. Uh, we shouldn't be talking about it now. With some horribleness mixed in between. <laughs> we definitely shouldn't be talking about it now. We shouldn't. All right. I think I got everything. Here you fucking go. Delicious. Not also, bad, yes. Also, yes. No, what I'm getting at. <laughs> God damn it. You did it again. No, no, it's not something I did again. It's something I didn't do. Uh, ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I'll get that fixed in a second. Come on, you dirty fucking gene. Do what I want. Thank you. Jesus fucking Christ. Wow. Yeah.
he's definitely close to wherever he wants to be. <laughs> so, for lack of a better word. Wow, dude. Uh, okay. Uh, that's the most convoluted, complicated... Way to say a guy's walking through the rain, huh? <laughs> yeah, that a guy's walking through the rain with a map. He may or may not have a specific destination in mind. We don't know, but, like, that's all that's going on. And you just gave, like, this serious amount of possibilities of what may or may not be going on. And it's making me wonder if maybe your marijuana consumption is getting out of control. Here's the problem. I haven't had any marijuana in a long time. <laughs> like, a real long time. You're naturally like, this confused? Yeah. Yeah. Lately, yeah. It's been this way. <laughs> we need to have you tested. I'm not exactly pleased by it. <laughs> no, I'm legit concerned as your friend, man. We need to have you tested. Just fuck. It, it's been a long night. Uh, we, let's just put it that way. <laughs> All right, I'll let you off the hook this week. But if I don't see an improvement next week, we're gonna have you talk to a doctor. <laughs> yeah, right. No shit. Oh, um. This is how we <laughs> add another element to the story that's gonna keep the pressure cooker under severe pressure. Pressure. Under the pressure. Under pressure. Um, Don't you fucking sing it. Yeah, I know, right? Dun, 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 dun. As long as you agree that the guy who was the Charlie Chaplin did the stabbing and the killing ended up at this fucking house, we're good. Let's move on. Yes. Yes. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I, also, I sign here. I'm like, yeah, sign here. Date sign here. 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 Initials. Yeah. Initial here. Date yeah, there. All right. Yeah. Okay. Here, right here. Uh -huh. All right. There. Uh -huh. Okay, let's there. move on. And here. Okay. Not all neat that she was objectified. The neat that she had one, uh, she was like a one name person like Madonna. Right. Share. I was hoping that you were saying neat to that and not the objectification. But I mean, if you're saying neat yeah. to the objectification, then that's between you and, uh, you know. No, I'm not. That's not me. <laughs> you not, and your I'm conscience, I guess. That's all I yeah, have I'm to threaten you with. That. That's, that's not who I am. <laughs> anyway, let's back it up here and move past all, right. all of this moral ambiguity and arguments. <laughs> Sorry about that, is, everyone. What the fuck is wrong with us tonight? <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, what, what happens when you double up on a work call going right into a show? Okay. <laughs> I completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> or is she that regressed because she's, you know, infantilized like she's still a child, you know? Jesus. You know, I wasn't really asking myself these questions, and now I am, and thanks. Um, yeah, so, neither one of us is going to sleep too well tonight. I know that. No, no, it's it's not going to go all that great. Um, <laughs> I'm going to sit here wide awake going, thanks a lot, Court. That's Those are thoughts I needed today. <laughs> God damn it, Chris Miller. Why do you make me think these thoughts? <laughs> Stop making me feel things. <laughs> You're not the only one corrupted by this film. Yeah, right? They uh, drive into town, uh, her and uh, uh, Chris and, and, oh my god, <laughs> I'm like, I can't even fucking talk tonight. Ugh. Okay, I'm going to plug it in here, but uh, did you ever watch Happy Endings? Happy Endings. Yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah. All right, there's a sequence where um, Damon Wayans Jr. says, I've just watched a bunch of Nurse Jackie. I literally can't handle any more drama. This is too much drama or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah, 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 Happy Endings. Yeah, I watched that. Okay. God damn it. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to- I love that show. I'm going to plug that in here, and this explanation is going to yeah. get excised out to the- uh, out <laughs> there traveling on your own road try not to think about all the people that may be underneath it and kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch i didn't want you to step on that so i tried to do it as quickly yeah. as possible yeah good job that was a good one <laughs> And I've stopped.